remember the time when I felt so all alone. When I needed to Jesus, all I had to do was call. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes late at night. When I got up on my knees, everything was all right. intercessory time that we come to intercede on behalf of those that are less fortunate than we are. That opportunity that we have to come to and have a little talk for us. It's also the opportunity we have that we might come and listen to him as he speaks to us in his own way. We invite those from Bethel that desire to come to come now as we share in the altar call. The desire may come and by a mask on and with our 12 feet distance apart, we come for altar prayer. As they are coming, those that desire, as they are coming, we invite our Facebook friends to come with us now and go to your praying corner. Go now and have your little talk. Of God is praying. Thank you. 
Maybe you'll hear it. Uh, Started with verse one, and I want to invite your attention down to verse five of Luke chapter eleven, and beginning reading with verse five of the eleventh chapter of Luke, and I'll be reading from now the contemporary English version. Praise the Lord. Confirmation is good for the soul. Verse 5, contemporary version, find these words. Then Jesus went on to say, Suppose one of you goes to a plane in the middle of the night and say, Let me borrow three loaves of bread. A friend of mine has dropped in, and I don't have a thing for him to eat. And suppose, Jesus said, your friend answers, Don't bother me. The door is bolted, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give you something. Verse 8. In the King James Version, you know this is a red letter. That tells us that Jesus is talking. So listen to it as he continues in verse 8. He may not get up and give you the bread just because you are his friend. But, somebody say but. He will get up and give you as much as you need simply because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. Don't hear that? Then come with me to verse 9. Jesus is still called. So I tell you to ask and you will receive. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. And then Jesus said, Everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who searches will find. And the door will be open for everyone who knocks. End of the reading. Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 10. I want to try to drift this to that passage of story. When a friend need a friend, when a friend need a friend. Now let's pray. Lord Jesus, we bless, we honor, we glorify, we magnify your name. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, God, of our sins. Cast them into the sea of forgiveness, never to rise again. Help us, dear God, to sit no more. Come by here then. Let flow your Holy Spirit. Open up our hearts, our souls, our minds. And we may be tuned and focused in to your word and your way. So now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. And then the church said, When a friend needs, can I ask Mary Wrestler to help us out for just one second? So I just want to just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. 
Webster says that a friend is a person whom one knows well. Yeah. Says that a friend is a person that has you have close acquaintance with. I mean, you you know them. It's not just a friend. It's not someone you met today. Amen. Then Webster says that a friend is one who is not your enemy. Yeah, that's a friend. He's not your enemy or your foe. Then Webster says that a friend is a, is a support. Or is someone that's a sympathizer. Yeah. They, they can share, relate to what it is. Now, I didn't want to go past, and I want to go beyond Mary Webster, and I want to elaborate for just a second and then tell you that, and some of you will understand this, a friend has no barrier. A friend has no stipulation. A friend, I mean a real friend, they don't, they, they, they don't have any stipulations on their friendship. Friendship is friendship. And I need to make sure we understand that a friend can be male or female, regardless of gender. I need to make sure you understand that, that, that a friend can, can, can be any color. Red, yellow, black, white, brown, does not matter. A friend can, can be any color. And I want to just let somebody know that, that, that a friend also can be Catholic, Protestant, amen, somebody can be Jewish, can be Muslim. Friendship has no barrier when it comes to, amen, religion. And all that. Amen, somebody. And I want to just let somebody know that a friend can be of any profession or career. Amen. A friend can be a pastor. A friend can be a police officer. A friend, a friend can be a principal. A friend can be a teacher. A friend can be anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Truett, I, I, I need somebody today to understand also that a friend can be a spouse. Or it can be a significant other to somebody. Uh -huh. We'll leave it about that. And, and so you understand that, that a friend could also be a, a co-worker. And, and then if you understand that, you can understand that in this parable that Jesus is talking about, a friend could be a neighbor. Yeah. Uh, so so when, when friendship is considered a mutual thing, that is that both people are in agreement with the, the friendship or the relationship, then when there's something that you want to talk about, yeah, and, and 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 because you share your relationship or friendship with that person, you feel confident that you can go to that person with what it that you want to talk about, and you can tell them all about it. And when this thing is 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 mutual, and 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 when there's something that you you need to borrow from your friend, and and. And the reason that you can go and borrow and come to them is because you know they have what it is that you need. And so you can go to them, amen, and borrow from them because they're your friend. That's what friends do. Can I, can I just make sure we all on the same thing? Friends, when you go to them to talk to them, they don't put your business in the street. They, they don't tell everybody what's going on 
with you based on what you share with them. Friends don't do that. Friends don't take advantage of you. They, they don't just use you because they know your vulnerable areas. You've exposed some things to them. They don't take advantage of you. Friends don't do that. Friends don't beat you up with words. Amen, somebody. They, they build you up. They inspire you. Friends, amen, they encourage you. And that's what friends do. So, so in, in this chapter 11 of Luke, Jesus' friends, his, his, his disciples, they asked Jesus for something. They felt like that they knew him well enough. They felt like that they had a good enough relationship with him. They, they felt like they had observed him well enough that, that they could ask him to do something for them. Well, and, and so they, they came to Jesus. And I, I want you to understand that, that when, when you have a friend, you have the confidence that they can be trusted. You, you, you can ask them almost anything. Yeah. So, so they, they said to Jesus, uh, teach us to pray. Yeah. Teach us, Jesus, just to pray. Just like John taught his disciples to pray. Teach us. I'm afraid. Can I, can I make sure you get this now? They, they came to Jesus with this request, and he was their friend. After they just saw him pray. Yeah. Uh, the disciples had noticed either that 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 that. It seemed that there was one bottom line to Jesus. There was one little niche that he had that, that seemed to go deeper than anything else. They, they had observed him and they found that there was just one area in his life that, that it seemed that he always resorted to, and that was prayer. Can I, can I let you know that they, they, they didn't notice that he, he, he always was singing songs. Yeah. They, they, they noticed that it wasn't that he was always somewhere studying. Yeah. Or, or reading the, the Bible. He, it wasn't that he was somewhere preaching all the time. It wasn't that he was exercising. It wasn't that he was at rehearsal all the time. They noticed that all the time. See, he was somewhere praying. When, when Jesus was baptized, what, what did he get out of the water to do? He started praying. But when he withdrew from the society and went out into the wilderness, what did he do for 30 days and 30 nights? He fasted and he prayed. He, he was there just praying. Uh, yeah, that's what he was doing. He wasn't out there laying up and resting and, and getting himself together. He was out Praying, and, and when he went up on the mountaintop, and when, when he was transfigured there on the mountaintop, uh, what is it that he was doing when the three of them looked up? He was praying. Jesus himself, yeah, transfigured, and he started praying. And, and before he, he raised Lazarus from death, uh, the Bible says that before he did it, he, what did he do? He prayed about it. Yeah, he, he was constantly in prayer. And then on that Thursday night before his crucifixion, he went out into the garden of Gethsemane knowing what was going to happen. He didn't go out there to do all this or to do that, but the Bible tells us he went out there and he prayed. Oh, it's like, just come on, let's just go pray. 
So clearly, this, this example of a, a constant praying, it, it inspired his disciples to, to want to understand and know more about what this thing was about praying. And, and so the Bible basically says that Jesus honored their request of him. I don't know which one of the disciples asked him for it, but, but the Bible lets us know that he honored their request. You go back and read that first four or five verses. It, it tells you that he, he taught them what we today commonly call the Lord's Prayer. And here's the part that unfortunately too often some of us forget. The message didn't end when he finished the Lord's Prayer. Sister Jackson, it didn't end there because in verse 5, it tells us that he said something else after he said the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Jesus went further. He went beyond the Lord's Prayer. Verse 5. Remember that Jesus had just finished praying. When they made the request. Then suddenly, in the Lord's prayer, Jesus said something that he hoped the disciples didn't miss. For in verse 3 of the Lord's prayer, Jesus says to them, uh, Give us day by day our daily bread. In other words, every day, each day, Monday through Sunday, we need bread. Give us each day the food that we need. You can't get through tomorrow on what you had yesterday. So now Jesus trying to get his disciples to pray. He taught them to pray. And now he comes before them and he gives them what we call today a rhetorical question. It was a question that he didn't want an answer for. It was a question that he didn't expect them to really perhaps understand, but he didn't want an answer, so he asked them a rhetorical question. Just suppose one day, he said, you go to your friend who could be your neighbor or a close acquaintance, amen, or a supporter. Suppose one day you go to that person and you go to your neighbor, your friend, and it's at midnight. Because your friend, you already know they're at home. You, you know they have it. Because they're your friend. You, you all know each other's schedule. You know that at midnight, your friend is in at home. Amen. They're not out visiting somewhere. You know that at midnight, your friends are sound asleep. Because after all, it's midnight. But it's someone that you know and you feel like, amen, you go and you knock on that door, even if that's midnight, they're going to answer the door. Why? Because it's your freedom. And so Jesus says, you, you suppose you go there and it's at midnight and you start knocking on the door, knowing that they're asleep. And when you knock on the door, you didn't hear anything. What's supposed to hear that? Everybody is sleeping. And so, so when you don't hear something, you wait for five minutes, knowing that your friend is in there, and knowing that your friend is likely sound asleep. So, Reverend Norfolk, you start knocking again five minutes later. And still, there is no answer. But it's your friend that's in there, and you know he's there, and you know, Michael, your friend is asleep. And so finally, amen, 
your friend respond to your knock. But it's not the response that you were looking for. And you try to appeal to your friend and you let him know that, look, brother, I've got a friend that came in on a mouse. I didn't invite him, he just showed up. But he's my friend. And I looked in my refrigerator and I looked in the closet, I looked all over the kitchen and I had nothing to offer him to eat, but he, my friend. And the girl says to you, don't bother me. Leave me alone. Everybody in this house, we're all in bed and we're sound asleep. Go away. And you told him your story. You told him that I have a friend that, that, that's, that's come on now and I want to give him bread to eat, but I don't have any bread, but I know you have some bread. You are my friend. And there you are at midnight. It's now 12.30 in the morning, and you are still knocking on his door. You still not. You know he's there. You know he can solve your problem if he'll only get up and come to the door. Listen. Verse 8. Jesus says to him in the parable, take this home if you please. He says, your friend may not get up and give you the bread just because you're free. In other words, that's not good enough in this case. But then Jesus says in the parable, but he will get up and give you as much bread as you want or need. Simply because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. Can I say it again? He, he, he will, your friend won't get up because you're his friend, but he will get up because you're not ashamed to keep on asking. So let me take my seat on how you want to go. You want to apply this parable in your life. Here's what Jesus said it's simple. Verse 9. It's simple. It's simple in words, but difficult in action. He says in verse 9, brothers, sisters, ask. And it Shall it shall be given to you? Then stop there. He says, Then seek. Go look at it. If you will just go seek, he says, Jesus said, You shall. It's out there. It's somewhere. You've got to go get it. Go seek it for it. Jesus didn't stop there. He says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you shall find. Then he says, after ask, after seeking, he says, knock, and that door will be open to you. In other words, we have to be consistent. We have to be constant in our prayer life. We can't just hit and miss. we got to constantly be in prayer. Constantly talking to God, constantly listening to what God has to say. Persistent. 
And as far as says, we've got to be anchored in Christ. We've got to pray in season, pray out of season, pray when things are going good, pray when things are not going to get good. Always abounding in Christ. So it is interesting to me that Jesus tells his disciples these action words. You ask, you got to do it. Seek, you have to go. Knock, you got to do it. Can, 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 I, can I take you to the next steps? Oh, I got to leave you there. In other words, You've got to keep on asking. Just because somebody said no and wouldn't answer the door. No. Keep on asking. In other words, he said just that keep on seeking, keep on looking, keep on searching. You didn't see it today, go back tomorrow. It may be there the next day or the next day, but keep on searching. Now, for some, somebody that can relate to this, he's saying to us today, just because they didn't answer the door the first time you knocked, keep on knocking. Just because the banker said the time the first time. Go back and, and, and apply again, somebody. You don't know what the Lord has in store for you. You don't know who the Lord has touched last night. You don't know which door opened up for you today. You won't know if you don't go. So, so why should I keep on? Ask why should I keep on seeking? Why should I keep on knocking? Verse 10 answers that. According to Jesus, he says, Everyone who asks shall receive. Jesus says, Everyone who searches. You're going to find Jesus says that's why you should on. He said that everyone who knocks, it will be open unto you. I, I know, I know in my spirit that I'm not the only one here today that's been let down by so-called free. I, I know I'm not the only one here. And there's a bond to where I thought was my friend, and I was only turned down. I know I'm not the only one that's been let down by me. I, I know that I'm not the only one that's needed to talk to somebody, and I couldn't go to that person to talk to them. They turned their backs on me then. They looked at me like I was crazy. Amen. And just like Jesus, some of them denied even knowing who I am. I had some friends that, 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 that had so many excuses for not doing what I asked them to do. And I thought they were my freedom. I want to let somebody know that I've learned. Yes, Lord. When a friend needs a friend, there is only one person I know. Who's always, who has always been there for me? But I call on him at six in the morning, and I call on him at noon, and I call on him at six o'clock in the evening. And even when I call him at midnight, he's always been there. I, I asked him to, to, I asked him to, to keep me. I, I asked God to, to hold 
me mm. in this thing. I, I asked God that he don't just guide. I asked him that he'll just leave me. I asked him that he'll just go before me. I asked him that he'll just walk up all around me. I asked him if he'll stand me by the hand. Ask him if he'll just hold in his grief. And I ask him if he, please, sir, whatever, don't let me. Keep me right there. Why? Because I need a freedom. I need someone that's closer than a brother. I'm going to need someone that's more valuable to me than my mama and my dad. Mm -hmm. I need someone that can help me get to heaven. I need the person to be my friend that has a key that I'm not going to do. This parable reminds us prayer is the key. And if you will pray, let me know, just pray. Now, just pray. And the parable teaches us clearly. When you finish praying, don't stop. Keep on praying. As we stand in this house, there may be someone in our presence that need to know this man called oh, Jesus. There may be someone here that's heard about me, that's read about me, but don't actually know your person. Amen. Even with our Facebook friends, wherever you are, when a friend needs a friend, I have one recommendation. His name is Jesus. He will be there for you through thick and why? Because the word of God says he has all power in heaven on earth. Whatever situation you're in, this friend, Jesus, can deliver you. You don't know him. Why don't you take this opportunity today to accept him as Lord and Savior of your life? We say our doors are open. We say that we invite you. So come on. Be introduced. Be turned over to me. Give us an opportunity to be introduced. Come on through the chat box or whatever source you want to use. Let us help you. Doors of the church open to you. Christ is here for you. Receive him. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you heart out your heart, you open up and let it come in. He says, You come in. Won't you accept that today? God bless you. God bless you. It's our life. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let's continue now with our worship as we come down to worship with our tithes and with our offerings. As we take this opportunity to come on back, we're coming down to share with our giving. And if you, my virtual friends, feel that you'll be a blessed with this ministry, we invite you to do two things. Number one, pay your tithes in your local church where your membership may be. And number two, if you feel that you'll be blessed with this ministry, come down. You might decide that you'd like to give a love offering to this ministry. If you would like to do so, we have multiple ways by which you can do that. You can take advantage of cash out. Dollar sign, Bethel AME, West Memphis, Arkansas. Or you may choose Gilderman, or you can go and pull up Bethel AME Church, West Memphis. And you may be able to give that way. As we stand in the house, as we have our masks on and remain 12 feet apart, we're coming down with our ties and with our offers. Come on, Facebook friends. Those of you who can, those of you who may. Render your gifts. Amen.
thank you so much. Thank you. Sports is getting ready. We bring our ties in our offices. Come on, Facebook freedom zoomers. Share and give. It's part of the worship. We worship God by bringing our tithes and our offerings. Facebook friends, come on and get ready for communion. Go and get your crackers, go and get your bread, and go get your juice as we will do the consecration for you as well as everyone in attendance virtually. Shall we stand in this house and all over the land in honor of God? May we pray together. Unto the eternal God, we give thanks for these gifts. We pray your blessings upon the givers and the gifts. We pray, God, that in the name of Jesus, they may be multiplied with their gifts in return according to your riches in glory. Now, bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we pray that the church is Amen. God bless you. We come now in tune to share in our community. And if you will come and go with us, we promise that we won't prolong the community. And we come and ask first if you will unite, unite our voices together as we prepare to come by singing, There is a fountain filled with blood. Sing to the best of your ability with the mask on that you have. There is a fountain filled with the man with blood. Amen.
a que perder. Those that can make your humble confession to Almighty God by making them on your knees. Shall we all join in together with your own confession? Almighty God, Father by the Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all me. We acknowledge and reveal our manifold sins and grievances, which we from time to time most grievous to have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine message. We do honestly repent and are heart and sorry for these hours to you. The remembrance of him is free to to us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all of us. I grant that we may ever be up third and pleasing in the newness of life to the honor and glory of God through Jesus Christ. Higher of adoration, it is very me right now without duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels, archangels, all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy holy name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We will not presume to come to this top table for mercy, Lord, and in our own righteousness, but in our manifold and great name. We will not worry so much as to gather the crumbs on the earth, but to the same Lord whose prophet is always. Have mercy. Bring us, therefore, precious Lord, so to eat the flesh of our dear Son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. <laughs> Facebook friends and our rumors with your elements in hand, you will now hold them. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, with thy tender mercy, just give thy own Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice. Oblation, satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He did institute, and in his holy gospel, and us to continue perpetual memory of that expression death until his coming again. So hear us, O merciful God. We most humbly beg you and grant that we receive these creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution. In remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the very same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take me. This is my body which is broken for you. This do remember us of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he then gave it to each of them and said, Drink you all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Care for you, care for me, for the remission of sin. Then he said to them, Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. This represents the body of our Lord and my Savior. Christ Jesus, which was broken for me to preserve my body and my soul until he comes to me. And give me my heart. I take this is symbolic of his precious blood. Blood is more precious 
when the lamb is more precious than the dove. This represents the blood of Jesus. Now I have renewed my covenant our lives. I mean, in peace of God, let's say the Christ Jesus arrived. As these procrastinate, we ask others common to share the line. This represents the broken body and his shared blood. Broken for you, broken for men. Shared for you, shared for men. Take, drink, eat, and be thankful in your heart. But this represents his blood, his body. You share for you. Well, thanksgiving in your heart. We beg of you to take, eat, and drink. Having now renewed your cup, Lord and your Savior Christ Jesus, we beg of you to rise with your cups in hand, return 12 feet apart down the center aisle with your cups, and there the suicides will receive them. As these go, let us come. That was the king and make your home confession to Almighty God by meek and kneeling upon your knees. This represents the broken body of our Lord and our Savior Christ Jesus that was broken for you and for many to preserve your soul and your body until it's coming kind of again. This represents the shed blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of all of our sin. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, take and with thanksgiving in your heart, eat and drink. This is in remission of your sins. He says in his word for us to do this until his coming again. He is coming back. No man knows the day nor the hour, but according to the word of God, he's coming back. Now, my brothers and sisters, have a mutual covenant with your Lord and your Savior. Christ Jesus, I bid you with your cups in hand, to please rise. Would you please return to your seats down in the center aisle? Go and there they will receive your empty containers. And as these go, we invite others to come. All right, my brothers and sisters, make your own confession of life, God, by me to live in the name of Jesus. That was the king. This represents the broken body. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus for you. It represents his shared blood. Blood is more precious than the lamb. It represents the blood of Christ Jesus. Look, it was shared on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. Jesus says, do this. As often as you shall do it in remembrance of me. Now, my brothers and sisters, have a renewed your covenant with your Lord and your Savior Christ Jesus. I bid you to rise. Please go down the center aisle. There, the school seeds will receive your intimate tables. Go in peace. And may the peace of our blessed Savior Christ Jesus abide with you. Through the season getting ready.
Those that can make your own profession to Almighty God by being good upon your knees. This reference is a book of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And the book of men, gird your soul and your body until his coming again. Therefore, with thanksgiving in your heart, take, eat, and then drink. He says, This we do in remembrance of him. Are you in the place of ours to join in unison in the Lord's prayer? Our Father, our God. I will be thy name, thy kingdom. I will be done on earth. Is that give us this day and forgive us our trespasses? Give those who trespass against us and lead us not, but deliver us from you. And is the kingdom. Let us pray, O Lord our heavenly Father, be your humble servants as our. Thou Father, we get this merciful to accept this our sacrifice, praise, and thanksgiving. Most humbly and beseech you to grant that by the merits of the death of thy Son, of Jesus Christ, through faith in his blood, we in this whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. Here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, our Saviors, our souls and bodies, be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto you. I'm going to beg you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this our baptism and serve, not in our merits, but part in our offense. It's through Christ our Lord, by him, with him, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto the old Father Almighty, world without end. Let the church say, Now, my sisters, having now renewed your covenant, your Lord, your Savior Christ Jesus, I be you try. Go in peace, and may the peace of our blessed Savior Christ Jesus abide with you. Shall we stand all over the house? And the Bible says, in this son of him, I know it was the blood. Oh, 
gathered in school throughout the city and throughout the way. We lift up our soldiers that are stationed throughout the world in harm's way. We pray for our city, our state, and our federal government workers. They need our prayer. We lift up the 46th president of the United States of America and the first female vice president of these United States of America, Kamala Harris. We thank God for them and pray God's mercy be upon them. We lift up every single church door that's open under the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. We pray God's choices and blessings be with everyone. One more for you, one for me. From the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 10. When a free Needless. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with each one of us now, forever. Amen. Three times together, let the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Those of you that want to give this drive by, please come. Amen. God bless you.